After two months of repairs, the Lekki Conservation Center is back and bustling with life. Home to a diverse array of plants and animals, this Lagos heritage site plays a vital role in preserving the region's ecosystem. And let's not forget about the star attraction, the longest canopy walkway in Africa offering the breathtaking 360 degree views from above the treetops. This and more will be our focus in this week's edition of Green Angle. Welcome. Yes, I am Esther Mapariola. And before we begin, let's bring you updates from the world of environment. The event was graced by environmental conservationists, public officials and students from public schools all gathering to witness the culmination of the program. We have mobilized young people, old people. The environmental program is a vital advocacy initiative aimed at fostering environmental sustainability awareness through educational programs and practical workshops within schools. Uh, children are very strong influencers. They're subliminal. They're, they're, they're surreptitious, you know, but yet they're very, very powerful. You know, so when you have a teacher who has um, taken up the vision to charge children about how to manage waste and not only manage but how to repurpose, how to recycle, how to upscale and how to reuse, you know, uh, in terms of resource efficiency, efficiently use waste as resource, then you know that the sky is the limit for us in Lagos. Every school should be an equal school. I mean, why not? Because it teaches the student how to, you know, adapt to the challenges around particularly pollution and of course climate change. It helps them to also, you know, become global leaders, even while lo acting locally. They are able to solve their immediate problems. And there's a slogan that says, we, their generation is going to end poverty, climate change and hunger. 23 schools in Lagos and Ogun states actively engaged in practical projects, focusing on sustainable gardening, upcycling and recycling, thus igniting a passion for climate action. Even our project too. It's a teamwork. We're not the only one that, but I brought up the idea. The hard work, everything, I'm the one pushing. So, and I'm glad we got to where we are now and we won't stop. We're going to keep doing greater things with the plastics. Many things that we take as ways that are not useful are really useful for us. That it makes me to look deeper, that there's something it's something useful. It's very encouraging, even to us, the older ones. And if we can get to as many schools as possible, you are going to see how this will grow. Some outstanding students and schools were recognized and awarded for their innovative contributions and dedication to environmental conservation. Forests are not only essential for biodiversity conservation, but also crucial in mitigating climate change, providing livelihoods for millions of people, and ensuring the overall well-being of our planet. But rapid urbanization, deforestation, illegal logging, and climate change threatens its existence. This event seeks to highlight the critical need to harness the power of innovation to protect and sustainably manage our forests. And when we talk about environmental protection, we don't actually mean environmental protection. We actually mean human protection. Because the environment will always protect itself. But when the environment protects itself, it does that at our detriment. Because we will not be able to stand when the environment protects itself. And that is why we ought to do it with the environment instead of the environment doing it by itself. So a day like this gives us an opportunity for us to reflect on the actions or inactions that we are doing that will be, that will be detrimental or will advance the cause of conservation, especially in this time we are talking about our forest estates. The concerns were raised about the disappearing mangroves and wetlands and efforts to address the worrying trend. This event is to emphasize the importance of forest and the need for sustainable management of forest resources. It is an opportunity to create awareness about our environment and secure our future. With Lagos State's population, which is growing by the day, 
we must address the increasing pressure on our natural vegetation, particularly due to housing and urbanization. It's crucial to embrace a conservatory approach to combat climate change. The event featured a tour of the Lekki Conservation Center's canopy walk, showcasing the beauty of the forest. <laughs> With about 401 meters long and 22.5 feet above the sea level, the canopy walkway at the Lekki Conservation Center gives a panoramic view of the entire forest. The canopy walk here is divided into six platforms and seven walkways. Starting from a serene boardwalk, the journey to the canopy takes about 20 minutes captivating visitors with its natural beauty along the way. Tourists, fun lovers and nature enthusiasts often throng this nature park as a getaway from the hustle and bustle of city life. I mean, this is my first time of doing this and it's very scary but at the time now I started enjoying this. Why I chose LCC above, I mean, than any other place, probably like the beach or an eatery. I just wanted to try something different, something new, and this is uh, this canopy walk is is unique. Trust me, it's unique. I will encourage anybody to do this. Spanning over 1,315 feet, the canopy walkway at Lekki Conservation Center holds the record as Africa's longest, <laughs> offering a unique perspective on the coastal ecosystem. It's been around for more than 34 years. So we acquired the, uh, the Nigerian Conservation Foundation, who are the owners of the Lekki Conservation Center, acquired this uh, place uh, in 1987-89 and then became functional since 1990 and has remained an attractive and tourist site since then. The Conservation Center preserves a large part of the region's biodiverse coastal ecosystem and educates visitors on the importance of coexisting with nature. We are happy that we are partnering with the Lagos State Government today to mark the International Day of the Forest and we charge everybody out there to try to preserve and conserve the environment close to you. Try to plant one tree wherever you are. So the, the, we are, our population is estimated to be at 2, 2 million, 200 million and above. So you can imagine each person planting one tree, or even half of the population planting one tree, that's 100 million trees that we'll have this year. And that will contribute a lot to making the environment a more place, better place for us to. You came here, you can see the fresh air, the oxygen, different from what you have out there. So if we have this kind of in, um, forest reserve spread across the country. Everywhere you go, you breathe fresh air and you live a healthier life. Early this year, there were viral videos of the canopy walk not being in good condition, prompting safety concerns. But this has been dismissed as an act of mischief on social media. The incident that uh, came up on social media, number one is that uh, is a, it was a mischievous uh, social media post that somebody made. Um, so. The facilities we have here, the canopy walkway, just like every other facility you have, uh, experiences wear and tear. Um, so we have dedicated uh, staff, technicians, who are part of the construction of the canopy walkway, who are our staff. They carry out daily routine check 
on the canopy walkway before we allow tourists to come on board. But you know that uh, being a, a material, man-made materials, they could experience some snap. So that particular day, there was a snap of one of the the uh, brace joining the canopy walkway. Um, so that person came and took a video of that particular point, and. Um, got other previous videos that people have come to posted people who came here to make skits you know someone like sabinus the day he came here he wanted to make a skit that would go viral and he was doing as if the thing when you go on the canopy walkway which you have experienced you will see how it's uh, swing, it swingles and all of that and that's the beauty of it so sabinus was saying he was he's shaking that as if that he's scared he's going to fall this guy went and cut a clip of that added to his own video and so many other things and made it sensational and put it out on on, on the social media i'm sure you you've seen the difference walking on the kind on the boardwalk and the canopy work we're coming what you used to experience before and what you saw today there's a huge difference so uh, so this place is uh, very safe beyond the canopy walkway lcc's family park is a hub of leisure and recreation <laughs> Visitors engage in oversized chess games, enjoy the serene ambience of the fish pond, and immerse themselves in nature's tranquility. Still talking about nature conservation, Kunle Olashupo gives more insights on the significance of forests in our ecosystem. This forest is actually a secondary forest. The anthropogenic activities that people have been doing here is more farming. People have been like you cutting down the natural habitats. Sometimes people cut down the trees to make charcoal. People do a lot of construction. So all those ones, they are more of anthropogenic activities. Sometimes people go to kill animals. So you collect some uh, plant parts, maybe for mixing or for consumption. So those are the anthropogenic activities that I mean. So human impact. So when a natural forest grows by itself, so it's being called a secondary forest. So that could allow some alien plants, some ex ex exotic plants, those ones that are not actually native to that environment, to that natural ecosystem. challenges we've been facing so far in this forest is you know so far it's not a natural forest that is a natural regrowth so we've been having challenges to have uh, a lot of gaps in this forest because the uh, exotic species those ones that normally do in, that have invasive property so they cover some areas they don't allow some other things to grow around them because many of them they have some uh, what we call allelopathic property so they will have some a sort of chemicals they release naturally around their environment they don't allow some other things to grow around them so that is why they, they, they will now be the only one in that area turning a, 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 a tropical forest to more like a temperate forest like you get to a temperate forest you are going to see only one species in very large area of land but the, the, the beauty of a tropical forest more especially the natural forest in Africa is to have diversity of plant you can see obiche very close to Iroko, Iroko being close to another Mahogany. So that is the beauty of the, the African forest. In our checklist in our ITA, we have uh, 200, uh, over 270 species of birds, so over 200 species of butterflies, 48 mamas, so like the mamas that you are talking about, which is the wildlife, like we have the blue diker, like a small antelope, we have that, we have the tree hyrax, tree hyrax, we have the marsh mongoose, we have the pangolin, the endangered pangolin in this forest, we have it there. We also have a lot of squirrels, a lot of ground squirrel. We have these flying squirrels also, we have them. So we have a lot, of, we have bush buck, the giant antelope that is common to West Africa. We have the African civet. So, but different types of mama that we have, there are 48 in types in our checklist. So also we have 28 reptiles like the snakes, the monitor lizard. 
We have like the rock python, we have the green and black mambas. You have to be somebody that is skillful. You must be knowledgeable about trees. Just like me, the way, the way I, I know about trees is just about me going to the college. It's not that enough, but the passion in me, seeing something green. So, but in line with the knowledge that I've had now, what I understand is that you will have gone to different habitats, different places. Let, let, let's say now, the kind of tree you are going to see in Ibadan metropolis or Ibadan forest and the northern part of your state is quite different. So like when you go to somewhere like Edo State, so it's going, going to be different. So Ibadan is just like a mixture of savanna and forest area. So when you go to Edo State, you are going to see a lot of bigger trees, a lot of mahoganis, like a real natural forest. So if, if, if you have those ideas, you will know that this is a savanna tree and it's fitting for certain area or the other. So you, there's no way with the knowledge, the skill, and some of the literatures that you expose yourself to and you build partners, you should be able to know that, okay, this one fitting for this. Like we have some trees that show preference to rocky areas. There are some trees that show reference to uh, like stony areas. So a lot of trees show reference to water, water area. They are water loving trees. So when you plant them in a marsh area, they survive very well. Just like in Lagos, when you, when you see Lagos like lekki area, so there are some species of trees, they can only survive in that kind of mangrove forest so without that area there's no other place for them to survive in this forest IIT forest that we have is the only one that we say is protected the only one remaining as the, the remaining urban forest that we have in the southwest Nigeria most especially being protected in the aspect of protection so go out of this place no other forests that have been protected and if, if they are protected, maybe they are protected for maybe for farming, maybe for logging activities. So there is nothing like the only like we are struggling with nothing less than from literature. They will say we are struggling with three to like for three to four percent of forest lands. You know, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the, uh, of the world, they just put it that there's a standard they put 25 percent of a nation land area should be considered as a forest area. So, but in Nigeria now, we are struggling with less than 30%. So it's quite low. So we don't even know the, the we are not even sure whether the 30% still exists. Because when you go out there, you go to the forest, you are going to see an open land. We could start from creating awareness, most especially to the young generations. So like IIT runs uh, school conservation clubs and everything we do in terms of restoration, the seed collections, we also do it here. So let's do the awareness, the publicity, whether on Twitter, every different means of like publicizing it, let people be aware of our home trees, most especially competition within the urban centers. People can plant our native trees. Like a lot of junctions are named after local trees, like Ibadan or Lagos, you will hear Idiaraba. Idiob, Idioro, they are all our native trees. Idio, Idiori, like Phytex Doniana. So those are the things that we should do. We should bring them back to, to be close to people, like, uh, uh, like encouraging people to have home garden, keep home gardens, plant some trees that will not disturb your property, like destroying your fence. One or two is okay, just for one plot of land. It's okay because a tree, it is been proven scientifically that a tree will supply the required oxygen for four people. So if you, are, if you are a couple, you have two kids, so you are fine with one tree. So you could do a kind of urban planting, let's, let it be sensitized. Also, the, the uh, government should also contribute to this. They can sponsor habitat restoration, some of this, a very big fast area of land that has been destroyed. And it should be native trees, not that uh, a, 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 a public figure will now be planting something like uh, all this alien plant. We are not from California. 
We are not an American. We are not from Europe. We are Nigerians. We are Africans. So we should plant our own native trees. And this will now be a very good abode for our living organisms, for our wildlife, for our butterflies, for our insects, and different things that we have that God has created in our natural ecosystem. They climb on it, they stretch it, and then to now bring out lots of, lots of ants. Yes. I visited that place in um, Omo, and that's what the... Green Angle returns in just a moment. Stay with us. Plastic waste remains a global concern even though there are numerous strategies being adopted to contain its harmful effects on the environment. Here in Lagos, Nigeria, the situation isn't different and with an ever-increasing population in a relatively small area, the task may be challenging. There's a significant reduction in the volume of our waste that gets to the lagoon and the front now and that credit goes to our government of Ajitesonwulu for a lot of work that's been done on our drainages and at the same time for tenements for ensuring that they are patronizing PSP rather than catfish. So the volume that we used to take from our marine team on a daily basis really gone significantly down, way below half now. So it shows that people inland are doing a lot of right things, but there's still a lot more to do. However, some local startups, organizations and individuals have taken it upon themselves to promote a sustainable environment through converting plastic waste into valuables. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Nice to you. One of such is a school teacher, Mrs. Ekbayang Undwenso, who is fighting plastic pollution through upcycling and recycling. Here at her home, she has converted used plastic containers into planters to grow some vegetables. My interest in using um, plastic as a recyclable started in July, 3rd of July 2021, when FEV International came to my school and they introduced Eco School Nigerian Project. And in Eco School Nigerian Project, they look at five aspects of it. They talk about upcycling, they talk about recycling, they talk about composting, they talk about organic farming and tree planting. And then when we started, they told us that, um, that, we, that whatever we found in our environment, that we feel that is a waste, is not a waste until we, it's completely wasted, I would say it's a waste. So I was like, how? They now say the pet bottles that you have around you, you can use it for something. So that was when they were now brought the idea of turning to a planter, pet bottle planter and tires planter. And at her school, where she is the science teacher, she enlightens her students about the dangers of plastic waste and trains them how to upcycle these waste into Ottoman seeds. On the board. So put, the, put this away. Creating this piece might look simple, but it requires precision and great skill. Count how many are here. Is the board balanced? All right, after we have done that, we are going to use cello tape. We have to make sure that it's settled properly. Hold it, with a leaf, let me, we have to make it become smooth. It's just a technique, you use it, you know? If you don't, all right, hold this. All right, can you check well? Check, don't check me, check. Am I on it? Yes. Am I on it? Yes. Settle? Yes. Settle? Cool it down. Alright. <laughs> put it in one of you should put it. Remove this tool. Sit on it and relax properly. Are you present? Sit on it. Sit on it, Rocky Bar. Yeah. 
Yay! With the help of recycling now, I was I'm able to like gain more. What we did today like this now, I can be able to do it and to generate income also. And I, I'll be able to impact skills on my fellow students and others too. Aside from these used plastics being converted into Ottoman seats, they're also given out to recycling companies in exchange for cash. The last time we collected money from our wallets, we used the money to buy things for the students. We bought them glass cup and we also bought them water container. That's container for them to get water. The reason why we are doing it is that we want to just reduce the use of such a water in the school. And that's about it on this week's edition of Green Angle. Until I come your way next time, remember, together, we can build a sustainable world. I am Esther Mapariola. Bye for now.